hat's a little snug. Today's episode is brought to you by Headache from Too Tight of a Hat. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Cruzy. I didn't wipe that part down very well. And this is Cruzy Originals, and today I've got a special episode for you guys. We're gonna take a little walk around the Silver Fox. I know you've seen me ride it, and there's been little hints and little glimpses of things that I've been doing to it, but I've kind of been keeping it on the down low, and kind of a personal project just for myself. Not for you guys, I'm sorry, but it was for myself. This was kind of like my going through neck surgery and building myself something to come back on is a little secret. Here it is, a little therapy, I guess, for myself as I went along. And doing so, I got really out of control. I mean, really out of control. If you've ever looked into looking into some fancy, fancy fucking oil line fittings and you get overboard with it, it gets really expensive. I've probably got another Dyna's worth of AN fittings in this motorcycle right now. Here it is. We're gonna take a real, real deep look into this bike. I'm going to get in depth with it because I did a lot of shit on here that you would never know about or understand unless you see me do it or I really pointed it out to you. We'll start at the top and I'm just going to work my way down the front and then we'll just kind of work our back in piece by piece uh, and probably jump around and go back and forth and be all over the place honestly but here we go. For starters this is a 2002 Dyna FXDX, Dyna Sport. I bought it from an old dude that had it in a storage unit in Mesa. I bought this bike and a snap-on hydraulic motorcycle lift for 5,500 bucks. Woo, I know. It had 50,000 miles on it though, and he was an MMI certified Harley Davidson technician. Never worked in a motorcycle shop a day in his life, but he went to MMI. And he built the motor himself. So, the motor ran pretty good for at least an hour at the lot. And then it started banging and smoking and really puking oil out of everywhere. So then I blew that motor up, obviously. And a part of the frame was broke that the mount, the ignition module mounts to broke in half, like a piece of steel triangle, quarter inch thick, sheared in half. I don't know how dude pulled that shit off, but it was flopping around back there, so my ignition was kind of in and out, in and out, in and out. So we had to fix that too. Then the motor, we threw a motor together really fast, headed out to a show in Denver, Colorado, which is really high altitude, and I had a brand new motor, and I put race gas in it, and we went and did a show, and I beat the shit out of it all day long on a brand new motor with race gas in it at really high altitude. So I blew it up, <laughs> blew it up again. So this time I tore the whole thing down. I took it down to the crank, Nailer Performance built a crank for us. It's pro plugged, welded, balanced, trued, all that fancy shit. Got a baller crank in it. It's a 95 inch, it has Harley Davidson flat top pistons in it. It's about nine and 0.75 to one compression. I didn't want it real high, I wanted it a mild motor. I prefer an 88 that's nice and smooth, but drifting you need a little more juice. So. I've got a fueling cam chest in it with a 525 cam. I like the small cam too with a nice 95 inch. It's probably making 90 horsepower, maybe 100. I doubt it, but she runs really well. The heads are all redone. It uh, has a stock CV carb with our Pro Mod kit in it. I did built the whole carburetor. I did a video on that. You guys have seen it, I'm sure. It's in the how to shit somewhere. It has a stealth pipe, H bomb polished. It's been beat a few times. Uh, motor stuff, we'll get back to that. But I want to start on the front end and work my way through it and then we'll get it up in the air and, and go over that other shit. Handlebars, I have TC Bro risers. These are my favorite on the market. They have a true two inches of pullback. When you measure pullback, it's a straight line off of the pin, the bolt, and then back to the handlebars. Most pullback risers that are billet and solid, they just rotate. They don't actually pull back. If you do, do measurements, you're more like a half inch. This is, has a lot of pullback. This comes from me having a destroyed neck for a long time and missing a couple discs. And riding was just brutal. I had to keep my hands in as close as I could. And I got really used to it. And like drifting and stunt riding, 
pull back like bars in the attack position. You want to be like right here, you know. Right here, you ain't fucking controlling shit. You ain't doing nothing. You're bullshitting. Right here, you're bullshitting. But right here in the pocket, you've got all this action and you can really make some use of your handlebars and control the motorcycle and stay on top of the front tire. And when you're riding wheelies, you can sit back in the pocket and lean back and control the bike a lot more. The deeper you are as a person, the smoother the bike is. Also, the deeper the bike is, but you drop yourself back, it's real nice. Um, on the bars, oh, Speed King's bars, they're my favorite bars too. I run them on everything. I just like the dimensions of them. I would like a little more pullback, just a tiny bit more to kind of, that's just all from me being beat up and personal, but I've got the new Elite Lever. This is their new, I think this is a one finger one or the, this is the they're, small one. It's their one and a half inch. One. Shorty, like shorty and a regular. Is what they got them. It's the shorty. I, I like it. I like to use two fingers, even if I can one finger it. But right here, I don't want to hit these two. I want to just because when you're drifting, you're just like on off on off. Yeah, ba 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 ba. Wheelies, same thing. When I wheelie, I just one finger it in and yup, clutch it up. It's real nice. I have attached to this. I have a Mueller Easy Pull in the transmission, and I have a BDL clutch pack. It's uh, extra friction, extra steel, uh, Kevlar. And I've got a 10% over clutch spring. I like them. I like them light. With this and a Mueller Easy Pull, it's just butter. I ain't into getting a forearm pump all day long. I'm too old for that shit. Come over to this side. I've got a Brembo RCS 19. Uh, this is my. I once you have one of these on a motorcycle, you're not gonna have anything else. I have this on this bike. I have one on my soft tail. I have one on my race bike. I have one on my bagger and I have an RCS 14 on my monkey. I, this is just, this is braking right here. This, this, what you bring in, it's not like eh, brake. It's just this, this is it. Shh. You just control it with just a fingertip. It's like a real nice set of hydraulics on a big wheel bicycle. It's dialed and you can pop this plug out right here and you can adjust the bore size so you can set the pressure. It's super, super adjustable. Bring that thing right in. Just yap, bop, 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 wop, bop, bop, bop. Real nice, real nice. Um, I made this out of some bullshit off of Amazon. Some fancy lines. These are uh, custom brake lines we have built by a company here in Phoenix. They're 3,000 PSI brake lines. 100% overkill, unnecessary. They're like 90 bucks a piece. You don't need them. They just, you know, I don't know. Like I said, overboard sometimes. Uh, this is our Cruzy Originals top mount headlight conversion for 49 millimeter and later. This works on any normal spread Harley Davidson. Anything but a Springer obviously will not fit a Springer, but this way you can run a top mount headlight on pretty much any Harley Davidson front end. That's not a bagger. It ain't gonna clear their neck either. Uh, standard Harley Davidson. It's my high low switch for my lights right here. Uh, all this stuff is available on cruzyoriginals.com. Everything I'm gonna show you guys is on our website usually in stock. If it's not in stock, you can just call the shop and Trent will get it in stock for you or figure out what the hell's going on. Right here, we've got Geezer Glide uh, Dyna Drop Trees. These are on our website as well. These are about 800 bucks for this tree kit. It comes with everything you need except for the fork legs. These are Jigser 750 fork legs. These are not the proper fork legs. You need to run 17 and up, but I had these in the shop, so we just built them and then I shimmed them. I have a copper shim in here because they're one millimeter small for the bottom clamp. They're dialed up top, but these are 54s and these are for 58s. What is this, 59, 55? 50, 55. 50, 55. So these are 54s. This is a 55 clamp. So you need to just have fork legs that are 55, 50, which is 17 and up, jigs or any of that shit dialed. They're also, this this was like 200 bucks on eBay for these fork legs. And then we had a sport bike shop rebuild them for me and they lasted one wheelie and they're pissing away like some of a bitch. So I'm gonna rebuild them myself. They've got all race tech internals, but I just, I don't know. Do it myself. I just need to learn that lesson over and over again. Uh, down on the wheels. It's a little bit of a mock-up on the wheels. It's not totally done yet because we're gonna have matching rotors, 13 inch North Star R brake rotors to match our wheels that are on here, the North Stars. I have those matching rotors on my bagger. I put them on that one so it looked better and I had these for mock-up. I'm still waiting on another set from Jay to get cut. But they're 13s. It's our North Star 19 inch rim. Brembo radial mount calipers. Um, look to those fancy ass brake lines. I'm gonna bring this guy up in here a bit. Oh 
man, my sticker's coming off. Ain't that a fucking bitch? I like that Brembo sticker right there. Well, that sucks. That sticker just biodegraded. Brembo, you don't make the best stickers, I guess. What is that noise, Trent? This fing race coming off of this. Coming off of what? No, the neck? Yeah. Oh, God, I thought you were taking the shocks or the forks apart. Oh. All right, sorry, I had to remove that sticker. That sucks. I had a cool Brembo sticker right there. I really liked it. It just totally uh, deteriorated. Um, this is our K bar, Cruzy Originals K bar. It's our engine guard, complete with K slider on the bottom. This is an add on right here. This helps protect. Most everything. This bike is pretty much caged. I, as you can see, it's all scraped to shit because when it goes bad, I just let it go. I don't wanna, when you save the bike or try and save the bike, that's when you get hurt. You get hurt trying to save the bike. When it goes bad, the bike needs to get the f away from you as fast as possible. You need to just let her, let the thing eat, man. You know, cause this thing's fixable a lot easier than fixing like a leg or an arm or a neck, you know, so I, and I'm 44, so like trying to muscle a bike up again real fast is probably gonna put me down for six months. So I jump off of them, I let them slide. As you can see, as you can see, everything on my bike is pristine. Because this setup right here works well. I've been building these for 14 years. We have been beating them on stunt bikes and stunt riders across the world, and they are tried and true. Proven, facts, big facts. Then behind that, we have a Big Bear motor mount. First thing we do on any bike, big bare front motor mount on any Dyna because the three point motor mount system on these is shit. There's no way around it. Put a big bare front on, it is phenomenal. We run OEM in the rear, big bare in the front because it's just too rigid with all the big bare. It's pretty rigid with this too. That's also why I'm not running a front fender because with the front motor mount and this motor, it was just rigid and the fender mounts, so in order to clear all this shit, were pretty frail and I just, I didn't like it. It sucked. The stunt bike, do I really need a front fender? I'm also gonna run a Shinko, is it a 120? Uh, the new one? Yeah. Triple nine. No, no, the size for the front, 120s? 110. So we'll run a Shinko 110. It's a little bit bigger tire on the front, real sticky. That's just another stunt thing for grabbing and drifting and that kind of shit. Come back this way. I've got a stock gas tank. Gas gauge does not work because it's a Dyna and it's older than 05. So that just, if you have one that works, cherish it. Don't ride a wheelie, it won't work after the second one. Uh, back to the motor. Our, this is our air cleaner cover on a nice CV right there. CVs are my favorite for stunt riding. Makuni will make more power off the jump. The CV is just smooth. It's very, very smooth and you're dialed in right. It's like fuel injection, it's really nice. I prefer those with our Pro Mod kit. We've got our points covered on it right here. Now down to the fancy shit. I've got an oil pressure gauge. It is an Arlen Ness that keeps leaking and I've got to do something about that. I'm not real stoked on it, but I love oil pressure gauge is really the only gauge that you need on your motorcycle. It's the only one I ever run. I'm not really a gauge guy. I just listen to the thing and let her eat. Right here, we'll start with the stuff that's on this side of the bike. I don't know how well you can see. Let me grab a flashlight. If you can see up in there, see that red thing up in there? Going up into the bottom of my rear rocker box. Little red doodad, way back in there. So when this bike's in a wheelie and that rocker box is like this, that's now the lowest point possible in the rocker box. So the problem with Dinah's and all Harley Davidson's is that the pickup, the return for the oil goes up through the push rods into the head and then goes down the returns back into the case. The returns are on the lowest point of the motor which because that's how it should be. But when you're riding a wheelie, you're like this. So the rear cylinder is still at the lowest point, but the front cylinder is up here now. So now this rocker box fills full of oil until it gets to the head breather. And then when it gets to the head breather, the only, where for, only place for it to go is back out the head breather. So then it starts puking out through these back into your shit. And then you start pouring oil out everywhere. So what I did is I ported, I tapped it eighth inch MPT, put AN fittings in there, some hose. The hose runs down through here, back into my cam chest. This has nothing to do with cylinder pressure or any of that. We've had a lot of comments on, that's not gonna work for your cylinder pressure. I know it's not because that's not what I did it for. It is to drain oil from here. When this guy's in a wheelie, 
it's just gonna drain it back into the case. All it is is a backup return to the case, which it works well. I haven't puked any oil by. My carburetor is continuously leaking gas out of here. I just rebuilt that. That was a bit of an issue. It sat for a long time and I should have rebuilt it in the first place. You know how that goes. But that guy, so now also to relieve crankcase pressure, I have this guy's ported quarter inch MPT. Dipstick is gone because I broke it and you can't get dipsticks anymore. So I have to borrow someone's anytime I check my oil. That's really convenient. But before I had a dipstick there and I had the dipstick drilled and all that shit too, and it was nice. Broke the dipstick in a different scenario, you know, around. But this guy goes up through the heads over to here. And it breathes off of this filter right here. So that relieves pressure in my oil bag. And we'll come back over to here. It's gonna be a little bit of a walk around right now. That's why it's called a walk around. Do you guys get it? So then I have that guy breathing, and then for crankcase pressure coming off of the heads out of the stock breathers, I have Trask breathers in here as well. They're bigger ports, really nice stuff. Those are also on our website. I believe if they're not, call the shop, talk to Trent. They are? They are on the website, cruiseoriginals.com. Trask and fueling. Fueling makes breathers too? I didn't even know that. I like the Trask ones. They, you, they come with a drill bit, you drill out the rockers, you make it's good shit. But this guy, breathers, stock ones, ran into lines. That line comes back to this catch can right here. This catch can then breathes. This breather line goes around. Let's walk around the bike again. That breather line comes around, goes into here. This port right here is where your car, your catch, what the fuck is it called? Charcoal canister that goes up through there and there's a line that runs back and it goes back into the frame right here. This frame is, this piece of frame is sealed on the bottom and open to the atmosphere on top. So I drilled out that hole to eighth inch MPT, tapped it in, actually I did quarter inch MPT on this one, I think. Put that on there and then ran these fittings. So then if my catch can overflows or it's getting by the catch can, it will go into this tube that's open to the atmosphere and then I have an eighth inch MPT drain plug in the bottom up in the frame so I can drain this as a backup if I need to. Should we do this side now? No, let's go back over to this side. We'll stay on task. <clears throat> so there's all my breather shit. There's my motor. Motor's pretty nice, pretty dialed. I've got a stealth exhaust. This is their D1 pipe, I believe, with the H-bomb muffler. This is full polished with a little bit of my shoes on it. I also wrecked it once and broke it, so it's got a nice weld where it shouldn't be. Love the stealths. We run them on everything everything I love them their quality they run better than anything I've ran and they don't break and they don't break that's really nice um, like I said we got our points cover I've got twisted T industries foot pegs I like these a lot I like a little rounded style so I can really roll my foot into the brake and everything feels nice that thing is dialed I also have Motul RBF 660 brake fluid in all my brakes front and rear it has a very, very high boiling point because the brakes get real, real hot when you're stunt riding, you're doing shit like that, you're on the brakes a lot. Harley Davidson Gold Eagle. Come on now, gotta have that. Gots to have it. Up top, I've got a Cruzy Originals Edition Saddleman Tuck and Roll Step Up Gripper. You can win one of these. The drawing will be around Valentine's Day. All you gotta do is go to our Patreon. For every $5 you pledge to our Patreon, it enters you in a chance to win a custom Saddleman of yours choice as long as they make it for your motorcycle we give away stuff like that around every two months or month depending on how big the product is but it is on cruisy originals on patreon check it out it's all of our podcasts are on there too they're pretty wild a lot of good stuff a lot of good people on there after that we've got a set of legends 14 inch arcs i run 14s on everything because i like them tall i like them tall in the ass a little lower in the front they handle the best that way mounted to this these are our top and bottom shock sliders that comes with the spacers, the slider, the hardware, all that shit. All that mated with the stuff on the front means you can step off the bike and keep yourself safe. And keep the bike safe while you keep yourself safe. On the back wheel on this side, I have got a rear rotor off of a 2021 Lowrider S. Had it laying around. 
I've got our rear North Star wheel. It's our four spoke version of our Skynet. It's a little dirty right now, I apologize. I've got a Jim's axle lock kit on an early model Dyna. This is super important. This goes into here instead of pinching the axle and not getting a true torque. This is actually stepped into the axle, so it's a true torque on the axle. Then it comes with these big billet blocks in the back. These are also on our website, correct? Jim's? Yeah. Yeah, they've been back ordered for a minute. But... They're on our website, but they've been back ordered for a minute. We usually buy a bunch once we get them in stock. Uh, this is our rear subframe, Cruzy Original subframe. It bolts in, it has several bolting points. I'm probably, ooh, I am one bolt away from being at the deepest setting. The deepest setting is probably about right here. But you can go deep, as, oh no, 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 I take that back, I'm bullshitting. I'm, I'm too, deepest setting's about right here. I'm two spots away, but it starts out here at like stock or even shallower, and you can move it in. So as you're learning, you can set your depths and set new gauges and new like, new goals, I guess. It's really, really nice. Very, very solid. Very, very solid. Comes with a Scrape City tie plate. All that stuff's included. This is our lay down license plate kit. Right here, these are all on the website. They're like 180, I have no idea how much they are. But they're on the website. The lay down to a nice works with just about everything out there. If you come around to this side, I have our chain drive kit with our Skynet sprocket bolted up to it. I've run it at 2453. She's geared pretty low. But that just kind of goes back to the old bad neck thing and I wanted this thing to clutch up really easy without me having to put any effort or whiplash myself whatsoever. Gold Eagle. I love that shit. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I've got a Cruzy Originals slider derby cover right here. This also made it with all this stuff. This will protect your primary. If you're learning how to drift or sliding your bike around, you go down one time, you're gonna eat through this primary and you can't get these anymore. You will be screwed. These things are thick, these things are tried and true. These things are available. We have these in stock to replace when you need them. They work, they straight up work, and they work really, really well. We had one guy show up at Durango with one around his neck like it was a gold medallion, and I thought I'm gonna have to make one of those for myself now, but it's pretty dope. Uh, Green Brothers Designs, shift linkage. They made this one custom for me. It is blue carbon fiber, or like a teal carbon fiber. These guys have super dope stuff. All their stuff is on the website. This is not on the website. If you want something like this, this, this custom order, you gotta call the shop. 140 bucks, about a two week turnaround. For the custom stuff? Yeah. 140 bucks, about a two week turnaround. Uh, this is an old Jesse Rook. It's an old homie. I, I always have one of Jesse's parts on my bike. Uh, it's a Jesse Rook foot peg. Been running that for a long time. And this right here is a Jag oil cooler hooked up to an oil filter. And I can't turn it on because I don't know where my keys are, but I have a little push button right here and it turns this fan on. Woo! And the thing rips. She eats. I have this plugged into where my fuel gauge used to be because that shit don't work no more. So then I made my fuel gauge plug with plug in from a fan. And I can uh, keep my motor nice and cool when I'm at the lot. This thing is a 10 row oil cooler. It'll keep it really cool anyways. I'm pretty sure this is on the website. Yeah. It's on the website. What do you know? Whole fan kit, it all comes together. I think it comes with a temp switch. I'm not sure if you gotta buy that extra, but normally you run a temp switch and it turns itself on at certain temperatures, but I didn't want that. I wanted just direct power, run it the whole time. So when you're at the lot, you're just up and down, up and down, and they're burning hot all the time. I wanted to cool that thing down hard and fast. Uh, inside, I've got a diamond primary chain, uh, new compensator sprocket OEM style stuff. I've got, what kind of clutch basket I put in this? Stock, isn't it? You put an OEM one back in it? Because I broke Brup stunts. We were fucking around. I <laughs> fucking around. I fucked his up real good. <laughs> but uh, so I gave him mine and I got a new one. So then I've got BDL clutch, all that shit too. Underneath, I've got something that you guys can't have. Still a Cruise Original oh, skid man. plate. The OG right there. Easy. Any of you guys have been around for a long time and following the shops since the early days? Me and Tallboy used to sell the shit out of these and run them on a bunch of stuff. But man, let me tell you what, they are a nightmare to service your motorcycle. Cause you got, it's it's a nightmare to get them off and on and you gotta get them off and on and do any service work. So I just kind of quit making them and it was a huge bitch. But we're thinking about bringing them back. I just need to do them in a different way so that they are serviceable. Cause they're, a, it's a bitch right now. Unless you got a big barracks then you don't gotta worry about the front motor mount that come off and on pretty easy. 
But maybe, you know, if you guys knock on my door enough and yell at me enough about it, I might start making them again. A revised version. I think that's it. I've got a Dynatech ignition system in it. Transmission's all rebuilt. Because as soon as I finished the motor, the transmission blew up. <laughs> so she got fresh transmission. Everything's rebuilt in it. Primary's all brand new. She has a fresh, new, completely new. I'm going to put new neck bearings in it because when I got to the lot and went riding, I forgot that when I assembled the front end, we did it for a YouTube video and I never actually really assembled the front end. So this whole tree's not even tight. I was riding at the lot and I let off the handlebars and went, yup, up, up, started tank slapping really bad and the whole front end was just jiggling around, which I rode it like that for a few more sessions, a few more days at the lot. And, but I got to put neck bearings in it and uh, torque all that shit down and then it's done. And I'm just going to start riding it a bunch. Watch out, folks. Ryan Cruz is coming back to the drift game. I might even do some wheelies. You never know. We'll be doing shows, though. This year, Bike Week Arizona, we're going to be doing shows. And we'll be all over the place tearing it up. So stay posted. Like, subscribe, all that good shit. And remember, every single thing on this bike is on cruisyoriginals.com. We are your one-stop shop for the tried, trued, and proven real performing performance Harley-Davidson shit. Yerd, thank you. Thank you.